Jason? I believe that we are at our last item for tonight's meeting. That is REZ 2016-05, Mr. David Deloach, on behalf of. Yes, sir. Um, this particular request is located in between the city of Hayhira and kind of the North Lounge Stone Creek Grove Point um, type of development. So that is the, the pocket that this particular request is in. What they're asking for right. is to change the zoning on the property from an EA, a state agricultural five acre zoning, to an RA, residential agriculture, two and a half acres. <coughs> Staff looked at this request and really had um, multiple conversations with the developer about how to handle this, which zoning to ask for, and ultimately the agreement was for an RA two and a half acre zoning. What we believe the maximum density could be on that RA zoning is 45 lots, whether they develop them with two and a half acre plus lots or do a conservation style subdivision and reduce that within basically permanently protect some of that wetland or green space area. With that, I'll be happy to go into detail about those two concepts, but ultimately the request and staff found favor with all staff for RA zoning except for the Board of Health. I believe the denial on the Board of Health aspect was because they just wanted some more information on the soil content for the property before they felt like they would recommend approval for septic tanks there. I do believe the developer has been in contact with the Board of Health. I didn't um, get a response back to them by tonight's meeting, but ultimately I think that was their concern was a need for more information. With that, the only update I would have since the Planning Commission's work session is we have received some communications from neighbors in the area just asking questions about the proposed use. Ultimately, I think their concerns were about density, um, the type of housing, probably more like the size of housing that was going there, and then um, the curve in the road. You can see the subject property actually has a, a bend in Union right in front of it. And they were just concerned about you know the speed of Union Road as it relates to where you put entrances. So I think those issues were lifted up. I can try to comment more if you'd like, but ultimately that communication happened after the work session this week. So those are the only updates I have on this case. So per, per our earlier conversation at our work session, Jason, you're 45 lots max for their one acre or 2.5 as long as 30% is protected. That's right. If they did. For example, to say I want 45 one acre lots. Well, that just means if you look at the property at 114 acres, they're taking 50 plus acres and permanently protecting that property. So you get the same density, but you get a different layout. They have no problem with two and a half. That's what you all know, both agreed to. Yes, sir. I mean, ultimately. Or, or the one acre if they protect it. I think the developer originally started out wanting uh, smaller lot sizes, but agreed after consideration to, to go with a more a larger lot size for the area. So they are going with the two and a half. To, yeah. the, for RA zone. Yeah. Yes, sir. <coughs> yes, sir. That's what the request is for RA zone. What size, how size? We, ask you say about I think the developer will comment on that. We don't currently have a requirement for a minimum or a maximum for house sizes um, and currently the property would allow for manufactured <coughs> homes as well as site built homes but I will be honest I think the developer has already been working on draft covenants that will probably speak to those aspects. Okay. That's I have a question I don't understand the concept of a conservation subdivision when you say subdivision will that land being conserved be the property of say like a homeowners association and the residents or is that set aside to be for the landowner and, and you know not the residents mm -hmm. i don't know how that works the cases that i've seen in the past the land was um, not retained by the homeowners it was actually donated to like a state green space program or a georgia conservancy type of group that um took over ownership of the land that really kind of locked in its ability to not be developed. I'm not sure which one they'll choose. We don't require them to do that, but I know of multiple cases where eventually the land ended up in a trust mm -hmm. or a conservancy or a state agency that they kind of maintained ownership of the green space. I just don't know how they call it a subdivision. It's mm -hmm. more like a set aside. I mean, it, they can fence it off. Yes. People buy them lots, couldn't, couldn't use it. They, I think they could use it for recreational purposes. You know, you could put trails back in there to, to enjoy it as a, a green space. I actually think you could use it for agricultural purposes, um, low-grade agriculture to keep it as, as a um, at not developable. But the subdivision aspect comes in because 
where you keep that green space intact, the other part of the land is sold to an individual lot owner. So an individual lot owner would say, I own an acre, it just so happens that my acre might be surrounded by 30 acres of, of wetland or protected area. So the subdivision part comes in for the individual lot owners, that's still there, but you get that conservation aspect because they actually protect some property that's not normally done. Normally a developer would come in there and just every property owner would have two and a half plus acres and they might have a portion of the wetlands on their property and it wouldn't actually get conserved, it would just be part of someone else's property. And did we understand that these were going to be hooked up to that forest sewer line? I talked, the utilities director and I had a conversation about this, and, and the tough part was it's a large property. And so whether or not to require that connection, but ultimately he said no. He honestly just felt like in order to tap in that force main, you're going to have to get a lift station, which is potentially a quarter of a million dollars, and he just felt like that would be very unjust to require that connection. So he anticipates allowing septic tanks on this property. Each lot will have a septic tank, a well, and it's going to be in a wetland, or adjoining a wetland. Yes. Yes, sir. We anticipate individual wells and septic tanks, and there are wetlands on that southern portion of the property. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, yes, sir. Any other questions for staff on this, this case? Any other questions? There being none. Is anyone here wishing to speak in favor of this request? Please come forward this time. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this request, please come forward. Please state your name and your address for the record, please, sir. Uh, Jack Langdale, 701 North Patterson. I'm here on behalf of the petitioners and Mr. Deloach. First, I want to thank everyone for considering our request here at the end of the agenda. <laughs> Uh, we are very excited about what I understand is the first conservation subdivision that has been proposed in our county. Uh, we intend to preserve 40%, minimum of 40% of the property. It likely be more. We, we don't have a complete weapon delineation yet. A minimum of 40% of the property will be preserved in perpetuity for wildlife and the natural use of property. We intend to deed the property to the homeowners association, but put deed restrictions on the property that limits what can be done out there. And the only thing that the conservation area will be used for is the natural use of the property and walking trails. Um, we'll leave it up to the association to make certain rules about possibly allowing golf bar lines. But other than that, there won't be four wheelers, there won't be any hunting on the property. There won't be any disposal of garbage, trash, or anything else. Um, there won't be any development of the 40% of the subdivision. On the type of houses and the size of the houses, what you'll probably see for most of them will be 2,000, approximately 2,000 square foot. We're going to put the minimum in the restrictive government to 1,800. I think most of the houses will be constructed around approximately 2,000, and be in the 250,000 price range approximately. The homes will be constructed under the guidance of an architectural review committee, which will review plans in advance and continue to monitor throughout the construction process. Um, if you want to have an idea of what the type of construction, what the houses can look like, the garden section, the interlude, or the most recent section developed at Grove Point, that style of house, it will look similar to that. Um, the lots will be substantially larger. Uh, with the conservation subdivision, we would have the one acre lot minimum, and the largest lots would be close to two and a half acres. And I wasn't sure if the number ended up at 45 or 46 lots, but however it works out in the final survey, approximately 115 acres. Um, we contacted most of the adjoining landowners, I think we've spoken with someone, and at least a family member of some of all of the surrounding landowners. <coughs> some of the concerns we heard, it seems like most of the concerns we heard was surrounding traffic. There is a bend in the road uh, near the area where the entrance is proposed. As far as the traffic goes, really all we can say is, 
have hired engineers to look into that. And um, quite, you know, we've met a few times tonight already. We'll go back to him in just a minute. Please no. It's <laughs> your comment on the traffic. All I can say is we have confidence in Jeff Lovell and Clayton to get with the county engineers and if all of the engineers from the county and Lovell Engineering are satisfied that this is a safe development that can be proposed for the future residents. And we will rely on their opinion. We, we can just say we would never propose anything we felt was unsafe and we'll be relying on the experts to tell us what is it isn't and where the proposed interest can be located. Uh, one other comment I heard earlier was on the septic system and the board of health. Clayton has also spoken with the board of health, so I'll let him comment on that. Uh, before I turn it over to Clayton, is there anything I can ask? I got, Jack, one, I got one question. I know that, that Jason has said that it was, was it a minimum of 30% had to be put in, in the, and in, in you stated that you're going to do 40%? I understood 40% was the minimum. Either way, that's what's been made out in that quote. I can verify that. But okay. And, and you said that it's not going to be a constant lot size. It's going to be mixed lots between one and two and a half? That's right. My understanding is the, the conservation subdivision can have the same amount of lots as would be allowed in the RA to be two and a half. And we prefer to go the conservation subdivision route, have the one acre lots and preserve the 40% entire track, minimum 40% for the entire track. So that 40% is about 45 acres. So I'm just curious, does anybody, and Clayton may know this, about the, the size of the wetlands, how much that encompasses? Do you know, Jason? Not that it matters, I just... I I, we had conversations with a neighbor, and I thought it was in the neighborhood of 25 acres. Okay. So that's, and, the, and that's the bulk of it then? 40% 40, 40 sir. So, so, so the third we've discussed last week is, it, so is 40 percent. So, which is 45 acres? Yes. All weapons would remain unserved. Any other questions for the presenter? Next slide. Clarification: I don't know if this is Jason from the Department of Environmental Protection. Is this the nature I understood correctly? The conservation subdivision allows us to have smaller lots, but with the number of density maximized under the current zoning of that property. So the current zoning now is EA. That's right. Which is five acres to a lot. 114 acres, that's 23 lots. Am I missing something? No, the right, do you that's have the right numbers? Okay, so what you are proposing then is, is uh, mixed lots between one and two and a half acres, maximum number of lots can be Whatever that 45. number is. 45. It's a maximum of lots. No. Yeah. What I'm understanding is. With the current zoning, it's 23. 22. 23. Okay. With the proposed zoning, that, that number drops to two and a half acres rather than five. So the proposed, what we are doing here is doing an RA. The rezoning is to RA. Yes, ma'am. And then you are going to be doing conserv uh, conservation subdivision. That's, That's right. okay. I just want to make sure I understand yes, the procedure. All right. The zoning allows them to have uh, a larger number of lots because the minimum lot size is reduced, so the numbers mm -hmm. allow for that. Yeah. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anybody else here wishing to speak in favor, please come forward. If it's Clayton, he needs to bring pizza. <laughs> and for the record, my name is Clayton Milligan with Lovell Engineering 3998 and Perimeter Drive. Interpreter Road, um, representing the client on the, on the engineering side, uh, I'll try to address some of the questions that have been raised. Um, beginning with the, the Board of Health, we did uh, get in contact with Richard, the Board of Health. His main concern was that he didn't have any uh, actual real soil information to make a decision on. So it wasn't necessarily he was against it, he, he didn't have any information to make a decision on. So he was, my understanding was he was one of us just deferring his decision until we were able to do a soil analysis, and we typically don't do that until we tighten up the lot layout and we're not wasting money or holes where we're not going to put lots. So that will, the Board of Health, our regulations are in place, so we'll govern if the septic system will work or not. Now, I will go ahead and say too, you know, the one acre minimum lot, that's also a Board of Health requirement for a well on septic. So if, if just for Board of Health perspective, lots cannot be less than one acre. 
And none of the lots, mainly when we, as we're laying this out, we're keeping a lot outside of that wetland because wet soils obviously are not conducive to septic systems. So as we're laying out this conservation subdivision, we're pulling it outside, pulling the, the buildable areas outside of the, the wetland areas so that the wetland will be preserved. Moving on to, well, I'll stick with it. it is, we are planning to preserve 40% of the, it is 40% of the area. So mm -hmm. the total area, I believe, is 114 acres, which so means at least 45 plus acres will be preserved. And I don't think it's been mentioned, but that 45 acres has to be contiguous. It can't be knocked up. It's got to be one contiguous block. And if a, a, a portion of that is in the wetlands, there is also a large portion in the back of that that is not wetland that would be part of that, that 45 acres. Uh, in relation to the concerns that were raised about traffic and then the one entrance that we were showing uh, near the curve there, again, uh, our initial lot layout that was submitted with the, was just a conceptual lot layout. We did not have the detailed engineering. We don't have that, Jason. They, have, they didn't turn that in with their packets, no. Okay. We've been playing around with different lot layouts. So. And, and since we don't have it, and Jason may clarify this, is are there any lots that would Base union. That the drive is still on the no, There's not, there's not any name? No. We're, we have a buffer proposed in what we're part of that uh, area, so there would be none fronting on Union Road. So there would be no additional driveways on Union Road. Okay, so I, I know, as you just mentioned, that I know that one of the considerations that you can lay down the center about. Neighbors talk about blind spots on curves. I know you want to take that into consideration. Make sure that doesn't happen. Correct. The, the speed limit on Union Road is 55 miles an hour. So we would have to provide per GDOT regulation, which is what the county engineer would enforce. We've got to have at least 610 feet of flight distance in either direction. And the, the county regulations would require that we follow those. So the plan review process would enforce those requirements. But we, as Jack said, we wouldn't. Proposing anything about what to say. Any questions for Brazil? Thank you very much. Good to be here tonight. I will we'll take another moment if we, anybody else here wishing to speak in favor. There be none. Anyone here wishing to speak in denial of this request, please come forward this time. Anyone wishing to speak in denial of this request, please come forward. State your name and address for the record, please, sir. My name is John Pike. I live at 614 Hall Road. We have a uh, family farm there that's 198 acres that uh, borders this property on the north side. Uh, you, said it's, you said it's on Hall Road? Hall Road. It's one of Hall and Road. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, currently, there's uh, four generations of families living there. Uh, 17 people. Uh, the youngest great granddaughter is 17. She could very well graduate this year, uh, get married, start her own family. So that puts that number up well up. Uh, there's only two other family, many family members that are not living on this property currently. One's in Waycross and one is here in North Lambs County, right here. Just a short distance away. So uh, we could very well have 25, 30 family members living on the Tower Farm. Uh, it's been there for quite some time. We have a, a mobile home park that uh, we have permits to put out. I think about 18 to 20 mobile homes I have checked in all that. But that's not really my concern. My concern is some of the things that's already been mentioned as far as traffic. Uh, being right there on that curve that's just north <coughs> of uh, Hall Road where it comes in Union. Uh, there are multiple wrecks there annually. Uh, at Franks Creek, which is south of that property that they're talking about today, uh, there's been people uh, have wrecks and persons died because of it there at that particular uh, part of the road. Uh, there are 
multiple uh, families there. It's a rural area. We have livestock. We have horses. We have other types of livestock. I have currently been saving and planning on uh, putting some livestock out there myself. Uh, I currently don't have the finances. I wish I did. I wish I already did. But uh, I have been saving for some time. Uh, making preparations to put livestock on the, the property line that joins this right here. Uh, I know that it's extremely wet. My property receives all the water that comes off of that field. I have a four-wheel drive tractor that I have to use to get back there onto my property. I use it for hunting. Uh, me and my dog, I put on a wear. We walk approximately every day back there. Uh, some other concerns I have, uh, the gentleman spoke about the borders <coughs> and walking trails and these types of vehicles allowed. Uh, I'm not for sure, but if anywhere you go in a rural community, I don't think you're going to tell one family they can have a go talk to another and you, can have a, you can't have ATV. Kids are going to be trespassing onto that prop, that wooded area. Uh, they'll be going over there with guns doing hunting on our property. Uh, there has been multiple dumpings on the property. There's a gas <coughs> that runs down the middle of the property on that particular side. Uh, I have to put up uh, fencing and gates to keep people from doing dumping out there. Uh, I just feel like that this was probably increased with increased traffic, increased population out there. It's going to have a burden on the school system. Uh, it's also going to be, promote maybe some theft and vandalism and that kind of stuff out there in the area. And uh, we have quite enough of that already. Uh, some other things. The young man mentioned uh, average house $250,000. I did some research. I don't know if it's only where it is the last couple of days. But uh, according to a study done right here at Vinosa State University Center for Business and Economic Research in 2012, Vinosa in metro area is the highest uh, price for housing in the whole state of Georgia. The whole state of Georgia. Okay? The whole state of Georgia. Oh, let's see here. Utility and health care costs included. Uh, I think it makes it rank second only behind Marietta as far as metro areas. The dollars that are generated from tax revenue for every dollar for this urban sprawl that we're talking about, for every dollar that's generated as tax revenue, it costs the county, the rest of us taxpayers, a dollar and twenty-five cents to make up for it, the loss of revenue because of utilities, because of roads, because of all the other things associated with this urban sprawl. Uh, you can't keep taking away farmland and uh, rural lives. People who have are accustomed to rural lives. It's just uh, it's really not something that I think is uh, appropriate at this time. You know, there are other places to build. And you have concerns as far as the, the wetlands, the septic tanks, the water aquifers, all those kind of things. I just don't believe it's a good deal for that community. Thank you. Mr. Pike, I just before you leave, with, uh, I may have some questions for you. You say you're immediately north of this proposed property. What is your atrium that you have? Sir, I don't have a map in front of me, but I have 150 acres that's on, that borders the north side of that property. It's a Tyler farm. There's, all together, there's, I believe there's, it includes 198 acres of Tyler property. Is this still time? I noticed on the letter of intent, it says on behalf of Tyler's. Is that family members or something? I guess it does. Okay. It's a little confusing. I'm all about uh, free enterprise, ladies and gentlemen. I, I really am. 
I'm all for a man being able to do what he wants with his property. You know, he has the right to sell it. Somebody else has the right to buy it. Somebody else has the right to build on it. I just don't think this is appropriate to be done at this particular part of Lowndes County at this time. There's a lot of concerns uh, associated with it, and I just would appreciate it if y'all did that consider all those things. Any other questions for the presenter? Thank you, Mr. Pike. I will take another one. If there's folks here that would like to speak in denial of this request, you can please come forward this time. Anyone here else wishing to speak in denial of this request, please come forward this time. Oh, you can, yes, ma'am. land if you don't mind Ms. Mathis. The proposed the, the proposed property ma'am? We're the fourteen acres right there beside it. Right here, to the north. Okay. Yes ma'am, go ahead, I'm sorry. Look on the screen. This is this is the property. Yeah, look what we got. I'm making sure. I, I see your concern, Ms. Pat. There's a I appreciate you bringing them to our attention. I know that several of them, as you've heard tonight, they they have somewhat addressed as far as minimum size and safe entryway, as, as Clayton has brought up by state guidelines. Uh, so we, we do really appreciate you bringing this to uh, up to us tonight, letting us review this. And when we were walking the property today, we have seen footprints on our property, which this, my dad had all done. He passed away four and a half years ago, so the fence is down. And it's been a little bit of quick, but we, I have seen footprints on our property with no connection. And, they, and we see no survey lines. They have not access to come on the property. Nobody has done anything to ask us. This is all right. Our land is extremely wet. And if y'all approve this, we're going to have more wet. We can have trespassers on the land. I have roads cut back there for fire prevention. If I choose, if we choose to burn the field, I mean, we couldn't do that. It's, all, it's not acres of trees. Less than the very back of probably the, the nine, nine acres is in the very back? Yes. Okay. I mean, and I don't, I, I don't want to put security cameras all the way around the farm to space. And we will be right there basically to them. Yes, ma'am. Commissioners, any questions, comments for the presenter, Ms. Mathis? Any concerns from commissioners? Just to notice your number five there, Section 8 housing, what, I, I don't understand what that is. In case they reduce the, I was told 6.5 acres, but 
but if they reduce that to a half an acre or an acre lot, they can come in and put HUD houses or low income housing in there. Yeah, they, they can't do anything less than one acre. So that, that probably wouldn't need to be a concern. I wouldn't think that they would do that. Um, Mr. Rager, you don't mind that spot. I was just curious. I, I, didn't, I hadn't heard anybody. I just want to make sure. Oh, I, yes, ma'am. I mean, my husband was a retired administrator for the Navy. He had 20 years, my dad. Submarine so and Marine Yes, ma'am. You're talking about the driveway that's right there. You have to look three times before you pull out of my driveway. And I'm adjacent to that curve. And they fly. They don't go 55 miles an hour. They go 65 to 75 miles an hour. On top of that, on the weekends when it's nice, we have motorcycles that come by there. And they go up to 100 miles an hour. So you're going to put a nice subdivision and you got all these crazy motorcycle people coming in there. And somebody don't get killed. Well, I'm probably one of those motorcycle guys, but I would do it 100 miles an hour. Well, I mean, it's a nice little road to ride on. It's a nice road, but, you know, they get from the curve over here and then you got little shops and they go up to the other curve and they go up to the other curve. I mean. It's a concern. It's a concern. Yeah, it's a concern. Yeah, it's a major concern. Yeah, it's a major concern. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Number 13, where you said uh, lost animals come and go were being dropped off. Are you having that problem now? Yes, sir. My dad shot plenty of them. That was one of very good. And I mean, we've had people on the side of our house, we've had people park their vehicle <coughs> with a trailer, steal my daddy's. Um, wire and whatever else we had out there, but we couldn't catch them by the time the cops got out there. I mean, and then down on the street on the road, they sell ATVs and boats. I mean, it's just crazy. It has to happen in a year, but I mean, what else is going to happen? We have more neighborhoods than that. Yes, I appreciate your concerns, ma'am, and we'll definitely take them under consideration. Any questions for the presenter from the commissioners? Thank you very much, ma'am, for your free time. If I could reach back out, Clayton, could, would, Clayton, would you mind stepping forward one more time? You, you have, you have the, the, the survey with you, the aerial map? Mm -hmm. Do you, do you, it's from the point of that curve back to the northern property line. Do you have any idea of what that, that lean on feed is? I did some preliminary calcs and uh, that curve is probably, and now if we're talking about the same curve, that, there's a hard I'm talking, curve, I'm right, about the hard, hard there's hard curve right there at Hall Road. And then there's a I want the, I want the point at the interstate. This. Right there, that point that you're looking at about somewhere between 800 and 1,000 feet from the from our property line to that point. So that that falls within the DOT requirement. Again, and I'd have to, to get a little bit further in my layout, but if, if you lay it out at the point, you can see it works. 610 more than 610 feet in either direction. Okay. Is this going? And David, Paul, now, did, if you got two drives coming to this place or a single drive? The the current left there the the county. Uh, Limits on a on a cul-de-sac the number of lots you can have on a single cul-de-sac to 24 mm -hmm. lots. So the, the current design has, has two 24 lots, 23 24 lots. Thanks, Clay. I just, I just wanted to clarify clarify that for the audience. Thank you for coming forward. Commissioners, discussion on this request. Um, just a clarification: the minimum one acre. Lot is that actually a determined minimum that's established, or is that 
the fair the, promise or is it in the yeah. regulations? Because I see in the information provided to mm -hmm. us it's sort of an example. <coughs> yes, ma'am. It is the regulations will actually allow you to go down to ten thousand square feet, but you need water and sewer for that kind of density. So when the developers come to us and say we're interested in doing individual well and septic tanks, the board of health minimum is an eight. So that's where that comes from. So the, the regs go further down than that, but that means they'd have to put in a community water system. They're not interested in that. So that's where the acre came from. Is. Based on their level of infrastructure, which is individual well and septic, that acre is where the, the threshold is. And that's set by the Board of Health. Any other questions? Any, any more discussion amongst our commissioners? We've exceeded our time limit. Uh, any other questions? Other commissioners? Discussion? If not, we will entertain a motion on this request. We, we've exceeded our time limit. We have 10 minutes per side, sir. Thank you for bringing that to your attention. Commissioners, do we uh, have a motion on this request? to the curves, et cetera, that's already mandated to for protection from an engineering standpoint. Um, therefore, make a recommendation, make a motion, we make a recommendation for approval for the RE zoning with the conservation subdivision with a maximum of 45 to 46 houses minimum one acre lot, which the maximum will be 2.5 acres. So. so we have a motion from Commissioner Willis. Do we have a second on his motion? I second. We have a second from Commissioner Hall. Do we need any additional discussion on the motion? Mr. Chairman, so is that an approval, sir, with four conditions? One for the conservation sub, two on the lots, and three. I thought that was just, that's what they were doing. Okay. I just didn't know if you wanted those to be no. conditions, or that's just kind of part of your motion. Just part of the motion. Yeah, I didn't okay. take it that way. Okay, I just want to make sure. Okay. Any other discussion on this motion? Uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor of the motion, please seek by raising your right hand. All of all opposed to the motion, signify by raising your right hand. 7 1, Ms. Carmel, it is approved. Commissioners, I thank you so very much for your patience this evening. Audience, thank you for your patience. Uh -huh.